The primary purpose of government as it exists today all over the world is to convince the people that they need the government to survive when in reality, they don't. Government is a parasite on an economy. It lives off the backs of the workers and the taxpayers, but it has to convince those taxpayers that they need government to survive. Basic human needs have been met for a very long time, so there, there is no person that actually needs the government to survive anymore. The big point is that today governments exist primarily to create problems so that they can demand their continued existence to solve those very problems. And then they get elected by promising people that they will solve the problems that they created in the first place. For example, the subprime mortgage catastrophe was created by government. Government forced banks to make home loans to borrowers who could not afford the mortgage payments. And so it was inevitable that that subprime house of cards would collapse and it destroyed several banks. It destroyed hundreds of billions of dollars in wealth and it put millions of people uh, in a desperate situation. Many of them were then suddenly homeless. And then government comes along and says, well, we'll help you people that were devastated by this market crash. Well, government caused the problem in the first place. It's just like everything else the government does. It, it creates a problem. And then after people are devastated by the problem it creates, then it sweeps in and says, well, we'll, we'll help rescue you. If government had just done nothing from the get-go, everybody would have been better off. And if you look at people running for the presidency right now, for example, in the United States, uh, take Hillary Clinton, she's promising to solve problems that her own party has, has created. Uh, the Democrats have been running America for the last you know, seven and a half years, and they've had virtually no opposition, and they've been able to pass almost every uh, every law they wanted and, and push every agenda they wanted, and yet Hillary Clinton is running on this uh, obscenely uh, bizarre platform that things are horrible in America and she can, she's the one who can make them better. Well, you have to ask the question, how did things get so horrible in America? How did race relations get so bad? It was because of the policies of the Obama administration that created the racial animosity and the disconnect from uh, racial unity that, that could have been possible. But this government scam goes back way before the Obama administration in America. You've got the Bush administration. They decided that the benefit to them would be so great in terms of consolidating power that the, the loss of American lives, 3,000 plus lives on September 11, 2001, was in their minds worth that sacrifice. After all, they weren't dying. It's the citizens who are dying, but they, the Washington elite, were actually winning. They were gaining power. They were accomplishing what they set out to accomplish, which was to convince the American people that they need big government to protect them from this terrorism boogeyman that they created in Washington. Uh, look at the Obama policies. They've been disastrous uh, for the U.S. economy. You've got now almost 50 million Americans on food stamps, and you have something like 93 million Americans that are unemployed and not, not working. So you, you've got large-scale unemployment, you've got the Obamacare mandates forcing people out of jobs, their hours are being cut, their positions are being cut, uh, they're being fired and laid off and replaced with foreign workers. This has all been deliberate because it destroys the middle class, which was a more self-reliant, independent class of, of voters and independent thinkers. Self-reliance is extremely terrifying to every big government. They, they do not want people to be independent. They do not want people to be able to solve their own problems or to even think for themselves. Uh, this is why you tend to see governments declaring war on uh, preppers or survivalists or anybody who really teaches self-reliance or homeschooling or home gardening. Uh, all of these things have been really viciously and aggressively attacked by government. You've got in California, uh, James Stewart, the, the raw milkman in California, was thrown in jail and was raided at gunpoint and had all his milk taken away. I mean, the, the state of California seized watermelons and cheese 
and destroyed $50,000 worth of food and took all his cash and threw him in jail. Uh, why? Because he was teaching self-reliance. He was selling people milk from a cow on a farm that did not go through the factory dairy system that produces pasteurized, homogenized milk, which frankly is a kind of dietary poison. What you see in governments all around the world is a desire to use food as a weapon or a tool of control, a leverage point to manipulate people, to uh, reward those who are politically obedient and punish those who are in opposition to the current regime in power. If you look at Venezuela, for example, right now, you've got the president there has ordered food to be restricted to those who are political enemies and food is, is rewarded uh, to those families and individuals who continue to support his disastrous regime that frankly has most of the country now in a state of starvation. So right now, as the laws and executive orders are written in Washington, the federal government can go door to door or farm to farm and they can seize all the food, all the farm animals, ranch animals, cows, goats, chickens. They can even seize tractors and seeds and fuel and they can then redistribute this food to those that they want to keep alive in any kind of a crisis. And who do they want to keep alive? The voters that keep voting for big government. So one likely scenario that you'll see in any kind of a crisis is the federal government seizing food from rural communities, which tend to be more independent and self-reliant and more anti-establishment. And they will then redistribute those food supplies to the urban areas, the city populations that are more dependent on government and tend to vote for big government. They tend to be more uh, liberal or progressive, or vote Democrat. And that's who will get the food supplies because the government has to, to take that food from those who produced it and redistribute that food to those who uh, didn't produce it but need it to survive and keep voting for more Democrats in Washington. This is also what Washington does with money. They, they seize money from those who produced it and then they redistribute the money to those who didn't earn it. Uh, while skimming, of course, 30, 40, 50 percent off the top to fund the government's own bloated salaries and bonuses for doing a horrible job of destroying wealth. This is how governments really work today. They are parasites on society. They use coercion, and threats of force or threats of taking away your freedom or threats of occupying your land, seizing your property, seizing your bank account in order to take things from you that you have produced and then give those things to someone else who did not produce them but is an obedient voter to politically support the government regime in power. The, the big aha in all of this is that we live in a time of such technological achievement and such uh, incredible uh, transferring of, of knowledge about how to produce food and how to live a self-sustaining lifestyle. We've got solar power, for example, we've got rainwater collection, we have permaculture food production. We have all these amazing technologies to support an independent lifestyle we don't really need a federal government anymore to tell us what to do. And the simple truth is that if government got out of the way and stopped creating problems, then everyone's quality of life would improve because we wouldn't have terrorism because terrorism has been actually created by governments. We wouldn't have poverty in society because poverty is created and sustained by governments. Uh, we wouldn't have racial animosity at the levels we have today because it is the racial hatred and division that is created by government as a tool of social manipulation. All of these major problems that we face in society today, including chronic degenerative disease and cancer, they are created by government for specific political purposes to keep the people trapped in a cycle of dependence and prevent anyone from escaping from those mental prisons that government propaganda creates. As a metaphor to this, consider a rancher with a ranch full of cows. Now, those cows are controlled and they're exploited, in essence, by the rancher 
Uh, their lives are sacrificed for the profit of the rancher and the cows don't realize that they're being led to slaughter at some point. If they, if they actually had the presence of mind to wake up and realize that, they could physically rise up and they could win their freedom, so to speak, but they don't. The farmer keeps them occupied, keeps them well-fed, keeps them in the dark about what's actually going to happen to them one day and doesn't really inform the cows what their purpose is on that ranch. Metaphorically, much the same could be said about citizens in a country like the United States. The government sees you as really a tax farm. It sees the citizens as really farm animals to be controlled, exploited, manipulated, and then lied to about their real purpose and how they are really only there to give more power or profit or control over to the system that rules over them. And at the same time, the government does not want the, the human cattle or sheeple, if you will, to ever really wake up and realize that if they only got together, even a small percentage of them, they could, they could rise up and they could take over the system. They could win their freedom. They could uh, kick the crooks out of Washington. They could revolt and succeed in it if they only got together and, and decided to do it, decided to win back their freedom. But government manages to intimidate each member of society individually to where any one person who thinks that they might be willing to speak out or, or, or march or stage a revolt of some kind is intimidated or silenced or even arrested, for example. And then that uprising is quelled and the other people in society fall into line. And this is how it works in a zoo or in a farm or in human society. It's all about the totalitarian regime that's in control uh, using intimidation and uh, deprivation of liberty and coercion to keep everybody in line while they are living as parasites off the backs of the workers and the taxpayers. This is all by design. This is how it's worked for a very long time. The only thing that's really changed is the vocabulary. We used to have uh, kings and queens. Well, now we have you know, presidents and uh, secretaries of state. The king used to own your land and you would work the land and you would turn over what you earned to the king. And now uh, the, you pay property tax, which is really a, a form of rent. You're really leasing land from the government. You don't really own anything. You're paying rent constantly, year after year, and if you stop paying the lease fees, in other words, the property tax, on property that you think you own, you will find out very quickly that the government actually owns it because they will come and bring uh, men with guns to uh, kick you off of your land and seize it and force the sale of that land in order to satisfy uh, their demands on your leasing fees. So you really don't live in a free society. You live in a uh, contrived prison, if you will, or, or, or a zoo or a a corral where uh, you are just one person of many who are all considered sheeple or cattle by the government in power and your only real function in this society is to vote for them so that they can justify their existence and create the illusion of democracy when they actually run totalitarian regimes that function based on coercion, uh, propaganda and manipulation of public sentiment. In other words, most citizens are seen by those in power as, quote, useful idiots. You are useful only to the extent that you vote for them to maintain power, and they prevent you from rising up by giving you the illusion that you have a choice in the future of the country, that you have some kind of influence through your vote, when in reality, you don't have any influence at all. The entire system is theater. It's designed to keep your mind occupied and to, uh, to make you think that you don't need to rise up because you falsely believe that you live in a free society, a democracy, when in reality you are living in a totalitarian police state regime who are deliberately engaged in social engineering and large-scale brainwashing in order to control you into thinking that you have a choice when you really don't.
So what can you do as an individual to escape this prison for your mind? Well, one of the biggest things is to start thinking for yourself, uh, which means you must discount everything you hear from any official source, which includes the White House, the mainstream media, any government official. Uh, they are deliberately lying to you or distorting things or keeping information from you. Uh, they are putting forth false narratives, fairy tales, uh, cultural myths, if you will, to keep you trapped in this system of coercion and control. You have to learn to reject those ideas and actually find wisdom and knowledge uh, inward and perhaps in nature or perhaps in connection with the divine. Uh, you need to go beyond the uh, political apparatus of society in order to get your information, knowledge, wisdom, and uh, inspiration for the choices that you make in your life. Sadly, very few people in society really have the intellectual courage to begin thinking for themselves because it's extremely scary for them to uh, disagree with the consensus. And that's all by design. Individual thought and intelligent uh, skepticism requires great cognitive courage. And it's something that you're not born with, it's something you have to uh, invoke and, and really demand in your own life and then learn to practice that on a, on a daily basis. And once you do that, you will start to see the world in a whole new way. And you'll begin to see through the propaganda and you'll have a much greater understanding of your role in this world and how you can actually live as a, as a free citizen in an unfree world.